Greetings and welcome to the Fan Perspective. I'm your host Nathan Nile, and this is WNBA Weekly, the show where twice a week, usually on Mondays and Fridays, I stand in front of this camera and I talk about things that have happened recently in the association and things I'm looking forward to in the coming days. On Friday, there's only one game in action. Skylar Diggins Smith, she leads the way with 19 points. She's one of five Dallas players in double figures. Tina Charles, she has a double double. Kia Stokes, she has a double double. Tina and Shavante, they combined for 63 of the team's points as the New York Kings on for the win. Saturday, you've got a busy night of action. The Fever have four players in double figures and some clutch free throw shooting helps them get the win. Then you've got Kelsey Plum making her first career start, and she, everything she did today was a career high. She's very young, 8 points, 7 assists, 3 steals. It's nice to see her showing some, some playmaking ability. She's making strides. Kay Kayla McBride led the team with 27 points. Unfortunately, the Sun, they had Connie Williams comes off the bench for 23 points. She has a double-double, helps lead Connecticut to their second victory of the season. And then you have the Storm versus the Lynx. Not as good as it anticipated. The Lynx for the Storm, Sue Bird, the only starter not in double figures. But she had nine assists, so I think we can take it a little easier on her. We can forgive her for now. And then you've got the Lynx, they've got Maya Moore, the only starter not in double figures. But they've got Fowles and Brunson both having 20 point games, combining for 47 on the night. Minnesota still unbeaten on the season. Then on Sunday, Brittany Griner continues her great season. She has 26 points. She also led the team in rebounds and assists. The assist part is the part that stood out the most. Her team wasn't playing that well on offense. Kia Stokes has her second straight double-double, the New York Liberty hang on for their second straight win. And then the last game of the season, you have a couple of MVP candidates, at least early season candidates. Tiffany Hayes has 24, Della Don has 23. Washington manages to stay in front for most of the game, and they come away with a win. And I'm not going to say I told you so, but I did tell you so. So after all that action, here are your current standings. So yeah, things are really shaping up. It's starting to get interesting. Mystics have climbed their way into second place with a four-game winning streak. You've got Minnesota really separating themselves from the pack early on at 7-0. Every other team in the league has at least two losses. They don't even have one. We've also got the Stars 0-7. No, I don't think there are too many people shocked by that. Chicago. One in six. There might be some people shocked by it. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed. I thought they'd at least be able to fight for one of the lower playoff seeds, be closer to 500. But the season is still early, so you can't really give up on them yet. Though, I, I, as of right now, just based on what I have seen from them, not really expecting much. Also, a couple of notes that I missed out on. You've got Courtney Paris injured, and she's expected to miss six to eight weeks, which means you won't see her before the All-Star game, maybe not till August. Also, you've got the European basketball tournament going on, and so a lot of players are taking time off to participate in that. I know Emma Misa, man. I've also learned that Kia Vaughn and Epiphany Prince are over there, and there might be others I'm not aware of. I've explained this before, I'm doing this on my own, there's plenty of information that I will miss on a daily basis. So with that in mind, we move on to the portion of the show where we talk about games that are going to be played in the upcoming days, So, and all five games this week are going to be broadcast nationally, so be sure to adjust for your time zones. On Tuesday, you have the Mystics and Wings on ESPN2, the Storm and Stars on ESPN3, and the Sky and Sparks on NBA TV. Wings, they just had a horrible road trip where they went wingless and they're looking to try and bounce back against the Mystics. They have a four-game winning streak, but they're undefeated at home and they have a losing record on the road. Only one win so far, so this will be fun to see. And with the Stars, the most interesting thing about them is what they do next. Because right now you've got a new head coach, you've got some new pieces on the team. You see the lineup constantly being shuffled, trying to figure out what comes next. It's trying to just find something that works. Meanwhile, you've got the Storm chasing the championship, trying to bounce back from a tough loss against the best team in the league. They have a chance to do that against the worst team in the league. 
So then on Thursday, you've got the Dream versus the Liberty. That's a morning game. It's on at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that's going to be shown on NBA TV. The Dream, another chance to either to prove me right or prove me wrong, whatever they decide to do today. They they are so far 3-1 and one against the worst three teams in the league. 1-1 one one against playoff bound teams. So... It's still a long season. We'll see what they bring to the table. And then the last game of the week, you got the Mercury versus the Fever at 7 p.m. And that game is going to be on Twitter. And so far, the Fever have been a fairly easy team to predict. Because this season, they are completely winless on the road. But completely undefeated at home. So we'll see how long that trend lasts. So yeah, that's it for this episode. Tune in on Friday for another audio edition of WNBA Weekly. And until then, this has been the Fan Perspective. I'm your host, Nathan Lyle. I hope you have a great week.